So this session is related to question related to topic thermometer and method of heat transfer. Like in the first question, a student wishes to check the upper and the lower fixed point. Upper fixed point means 100 degree centigrade and lower fixed point means 0 degree centigrade. She has four beakers P, Q, R and S. Beaker P contain a mixture of ice and salt. Q contain ice and water. So basically ice and water, a mixture of ice and water or melting ice will be there. R containing a boiling salt solution and S contain a boiling water. So boiling water, it means it will have a temperature of 100 degree centigrade and melting ice that is zero degree. So the question is which two beakers she should use to check the fixed point, the upper and the lower fixed point. So she can use beaker Q so to mark zero the lower fixed point and she can use beaker S to mark the boiling point. So that's why D is the right answer. So whenever we want to mark lower and upper fixed point, we will use melting ice or a mixture of water and ice and a boiling water, a pure boiling water. Second question, two identical cars are there. One is a black and the other one is white. The cars are left in a bright sunshine and the temperature of the car increases during the night their temperature decreases. So which car shows a greater rate of temperature increase and which car will show a greater rate? They are asking with reference to time like which one will heat up faster and which one will cool down faster. So we know dull and dark surfaces. are good absorber and emitter. They will absorb greater amount of energy and they will emit greater amount of energy. So whenever we have dull and dark surfaces, they are good absorber and they are good emitters as well. So example, during a daytime, when a sun is shining, so which one absorb greater amount of energy because this is a dull and dark surface it will absorb greater amount of energy but shiny surface it's not a good absorber it is a reflector so the one which you have greater rate of change in or increase in temperature that will be the black surface but at night what will happen so during the daytime these objects were absorbing energy but at night they start to emit out energy because the dull and dark surfaces absorb greater amount of energy so it will release greater amount of energy as compared to a shiny surface so as the dull and dark surface emit out greater amount of energy what will happen the temperature decrease at night is also for black so black surface will heat up when there's a source it will absorb energy it will heat up quickly and if there is no source and we have a black surface, it is a good emitter as well. So it starts to emit out radiation. That is why E is the right answer. Is it clear discussion? That why the temperature increase and the temperature decrease is more greater for the black surfaces because black or dull or dark surfaces, they can absorb greater amount of energy so as it can absorb greater amount of energy, the temperature rise will be more. And when the surrounding is having no heat source, so the dull and dark surfaces start to emit out radiation and they start give out more radiation as compared to shiny or polished surfaces. That's why their temperature decrease will also be greater. Any doubt in this question?
then moving on to the next question a liquid is heated in a beaker the density of the liquid changes as its temperature increase this causes the energy to transfer throughout the liquid how does the density change and how what we call this process so when we supply heat energy density is mass present in unit volume when we supply heat energy the volume increase so if the volume increase the density will decrease so what happened to density the density will decrease and what we call this process the transfer of energy due to difference of the density like you have a container which is filled with a liquid so there is a container which is filled with a liquid so when we supply heat energy the part of the liquid which will absorb the heat energy that part will expand so when it will expand the density will decrease and as the density will decrease that part will rise and the remaining the part which is where the particles are closer that is having more density or high density that will sink so this movement of the particle transfer the heat energy due to difference in density and we call that as convection that's why b is the right answer In this question, there is a copper bar and a wooden bar. So one side we have copper. Copper is a conductor, and the other side we have wood. Wood is insulator. Insulator means it does not allow heat to pass through. The bar is heated strongly at the center. So we are supplying heat energy from the center. the paper goes brown on the side one side only the paper this paper turned brown on one side which side the paper goes brown and what does this show about wood and copper first thing we know copper the all metals are conductor so copper should be a conductor and wood is insulator so either b will be answer or d will be answer then which side will become brown basically what happen when we supply the heat energy the that heat energy because copper is a metal and metal are good conductor so that heat energy is transferred the we are supplying we are supplying heat energy and that energy has been transferred so means example if i supply 10 joule of energy that 10 joule of energy is transferred to other side so we don't have too much heat energy to make this paper brown but when we are supplying the same 10 joule to the side of the board wood is insulator insulator means does not allow heat to pass so if wood does not allow heat to pass so what will be the heat energy here it will be 10 joule and because of this high energy the side of the paper will turn brown so the side turn brown is because that region the heat is not able to travel from one place to another so heat is being trapped at one point so the paper will turn brown on the side of the wood as compared to side of copper that's why for question 4 d is the right answer is it clear for question 4 why d is the right answer In question five, which feature would give a thermometer with an increased range? If we want the range means the difference between the minimum and the maximum value increases. So if we if a thermometer can record a greater difference between the minimum and the maximum value, we call that as range. So when we check the option, a smaller internal diameter. so if we use a smaller or thinner capillary what it will affect a will affect the sensitivity 
it will make more sensitive so a cannot be an answer if we use a thin glass bulb b will make responsive more responsive or quick acting so b will cannot be an answer using a large length of a tube and stem so if we use a longer capillary then we can record more numbers on the thermometer as compared to a smaller capillary so the one which increases the range that is c and if we use a large volume of a liquid if you use a large volume of a liquid or a large bulb that will also affect the sensitivity so a and b both effect will make more sensitive b using a thinner glass bulb will make more responsive c is the right answer that will make this thermometer to record greater values or increases the range like if we have two thermometers one is uh, both have the same size of the bulb but the one is having a thinner capillary uh, sorry smaller capillary not thinner and another one is having a longer capillary so the longer capillary will have a greater range as compared to a shorter capillary the shorter capillary will have a small range or a short range in question 6 the thermal energy transfer through copper rod copper is a metal and inside metal or solid how the energy is transferred the method is called conduction and what happen in conduction two things happen one is the lattice vibration like if this is a metal metal contain a lattice of positive ion so there is a lattice of positive ion and delocalized electrons so first the vibration of the particle transfer energy we call that as a conduction and there is also a second method what is happening these electron travel and drift and move so it involve a second process is involve electrons so what is the method of energy transfer and what is the second process so when we supply the heat energy in solid the conduction occur so conduction occur and how it happen it is happening at a lattice vibration that's why b is the right answer the diagram shows four objects one is dull and dark another one is white which one emits the greatest the dull and dark surfaces are good absorber or good emitter so either b will be answer or d but you can see d is having a larger size compared to that of b that's why d is the correct answer that d emit out more radiation as it is having a larger size so large surface area more radiations are emitted out as compared to that of In question eight, which change increases the sensitivity? If we want to make a thermometer sensitive, like we want to measure very small changes, what we can do? If we use a narrow capillary, it will make more sensitive. If we use a wider capillary, it will make it increase the range. If we use a thick glass bulb, it will reduce the sensitivity. It will reduce the responsiveness or decrease the responsiveness. and if we use a thinner glass bulb it will increase the responsiveness so responsiveness is affected by the walls of the bulb and 
the capillary size thinner capillary make it more sensitive either thinner capillary or using a large bulb will make it more sensitive in question 9 on a cold day a shiny metal rod feel colder when we touch like example in winter when you touch a door knob or a door handle which is made up of metal you will feel it is colder but in practical what happened why it appeared to be colder like example if this is representing a door handle so when you touch the door handle when you touch the door knob or a handle so when we are in contact the energy from our body our hand transferred through the metal that's why the part of the body which is in contact with the metal it, as it loses the energy so it will appear to be colder so which statement explain the observation the metal rod is better absorber it's not about absorber here because they did not mention the metal rod is a better thermal conductor than a plastic rod that's the right answer like if we touch metal in winter we will find it is much colder in practical the metal is not colder what happened when we touch the metal greater amount of energy transfer from our hand to the metal so the temperature of that part of the body like the hand is in contact with the metal so that temperature of the hand will decrease so we will feel colder so any structure if it is made up of metal or iron example you will feel colder in winter question 10 one end of a copper bar is heated at high temperature which mechanism is responsible for transfer of energy so basically what happened there's a lattice vibration ions will vibrate and there's a movement of high energy electron from the bar so there's a lattice vibration vibration of the lattice and the movement of electrons so electrons are also moving as the metal contain the positive ion and the delocalized electrons so as they move through the structure the conduction will increase the air in the room is heated by the heater the diagram shows a circulation of air which statement about the air that is heated is correct so a room is having these air particles are there so the particles of the air which are in contact with a heater they gain energy and they move away from each other so expand that part of the air will expand as it expands its volume increases if the volume increase what happened to density it will decrease and density decrease so it will rise and the cold air the particles which are closer to each other the cold air is have high density so it will sink so what happened the air if air contract if air contract the density will increase and if air expand so volume will increase and the density will decrease so the air contract become less dense so if air contract it will become more dense and if the air is contracting it become more dense that is true the statement is true but we have to state how the energy is transferred because when we are using a heater the air contract it become more dense the statement is correct but not with reference to heater if there was the same question that air condition was there so in case of air condition or ac it removed the heat energy from the air which will may contract or reduces the volume so a statement is correct but not re relevant to the question but when we check c the air expand and become less dense and hot air will rise up so that's how the con convection occur
Is it clear this question? The second, uh, another question, we have four rods which are made up of different metals, PQ, RNS, PQ, RNS, are there the rods? Each rod shows a one degree change in temperature and these are the time recorded. So they're asking which is the best conductor, the one which is the best conductor should take the shortest time. So when we check, Q is taking only 30 seconds to transfer the heat energy that's why b is the right answer in question 13 which points are fixed point of a liquid in a glass thermometer so fixed point one is uh, zero degree centigrade the lower fixed point and 100 degree centigrade the upper fixed point so the points marked zero and 100 are the fixed points the metal surface of a kettle is hot. So like there's a kettle. And the surface of the kettle is hot. What happened to cool air outside? So there are air particles outside the kettle. So when these particles will come in contact with the cattle, they absorb energy, they move away from each other. As they move away from each other, the volume increases, so the density decreases. And as the density decreases, so it will rise. So the density of air will decrease and it will, the air will rise, so that's why B is the right answer. Which method or methods of energy transfer are prevented by vacuum? Like if we have a vacuum, only which is prevented, like which will not happen. So through vacuum only radiations are able to pass. Conduction and convection cannot occur in vacuum because both cases we need particles in conduction. The particles vibrate and transfer energy. In convection, the particle move from a region of high concentration to or uh, they become less dense and they rise up. So the vacuum prevent the conduction and convection or conduction convection does not occur in vacuum. The thermal energy transferred through the space from sun to the earth, the space is vacuum. So how the energy transfer? So in a vacuum conduction and convection cannot occur. So only way by which energy transfer is radiation. Then 17. A cupboard is placed in front of a heater. The air moves through the gap, which will describe the temperature and direction of motion of air. So what happened as the air particles, which will come in contact with the heater, so they will become less dense and it will rise. So the cold air, the particles of the air, which have low temperature or colder, they will move towards the heater and they gain energy and that rise, so it will set up a convection current. So the, the question is, which row describe the temperature and the direction of the movement? So temperature of the air, which is under this gap, it is cold air because it is less dense, it is more dense. And the movement or direction is towards the heater. That's why B is the right answer. The diagram shows a heater above a thermometer. 
the bulb of a thermometer is shown in the position which row shows how the heat energy from the heater reaches the thermometer so because what happened the air particles which will come in contact with the heater hot air will always rise up so these particles will rise they cannot move or sink for conduction to occur the heater and thermometer must be in contact so there is no conduction between them for convection to occur the thermometer should be placed here at the top but it is placed at the bottom so convection cannot occur so the only way by which energy is transfer here is by radiation from the heater reaches the thermometer then an unmarked thermometer is there a mercury in a thermometer which does not have any scale when a thermometer is placed in a steam the mercury level rises to 22 so 22 is representing 100 when thermometer is placed in a pure melting ice temperature fall to 2 so 2 cm is representing 0 degree the question is what is the temperature so if this is 0 we have 10 number so this will be 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 so what this level matches with at 8 it means it is 30 degree centigrade so c will be the right answer is it clear this question because at 22 it was 100 in a steam now some structure questions related to the thermometer and heat energy transfer so in this question a 20 volt a 60 watt lamp is there watt means energy per second so if it is a 60 watt lamp it means it is 60 joules per second so rate at which the energy transfer to the surrounding if it's a 60 watt lamp so 60 joule per second will be transferred to the surrounding name the thermal process by which the lamp transfer energy to surrounding for example when we light up the lamp or a bulb so how the energy transfer so first thing a lamp containing a filament so there will be radiation the second what happen you can mention conduction as well how you'll mention conduction because there are air particles so the when these air particles when two different substances or the two different types of material come in contact with each other so as they come contact with each other they will collide with the bulb so the energy transfer from the bulb to the air particle by conduction and then when air become hot the hot air will rise up so that will be convection so name the processes which occur so radiation is there conduction is there and convection radiation it's emitting a, so mentioning radiation is one mark mentioning either conduction or convection is the part like it will complete the answer so if you only mention radiation and you do not mention conduction or convection you will not get that one mark because in igcse there is no half mark like either your answer is correct or it is incorrect there is no half mark like you don't get 0.5 figure 4.1 shows a thick copper block that has been heated at 40 400 degree centigrade 
one side of a block is dull black another one is shiny and polished in an experiment one the thermometer bulbs are both painted black they are placed at equal distance explain any difference in the maximum temperature so thermometer a will show a greater maximum temperature because it is placed to a side of a dull and black surface which is a good emitter as compared to shiny and polished surface so we'll mention thermometer a and the reason is that because dull and dark surfaces are good emitter compared to shiny and polished surfaces in experiment 2 the thermometer bulbs are both shiny and silver. Now they are placed at the same distance. So what will happen to the maximum temperature? So the maximum temperature will be same for both. But what happens? The, the readings When we compare with a dull and uh, dull thermometer, the rise is more slower, but the maximum temperature, the final temperature will be same. So if you use shiny bulbs, the change in temperature, the rate of the change in temperature will decrease because the shiny surfaces are good reflector but the maximum temperature will not change figure shows a firefighter wearing a shiny silver colored clothing state a benefit because it's a shiny surface as a heat shiny surfaces are good reflector so when a firefighter will come in contact with the radiation greater amount of heat energy will be reflected so his body will remain at a low temperature it will not heat up the body so you'll mention here shiny surfaces are good reflector so it does not allow the heat to enter or increases the temperature of the firefighter body. Question two, state and explain effect on the sensitivity by reducing a diameter of the capillary. So if we reduce the diameter of the capillary or we use a thinner capillary, what is the effect? It will make it more sensitive because the change in the volume amount of the liquid will it's of two marks so one mark you have to mention whether increase or decrease and second mark is the reason so if you use a thinner capillary, there will be a greater change in volume of the liquid as compared to thicker capillary. If we increase the large bulb, that will also make it more sensitive because greater amount of liquid which increase the
rate of expansion. So we have greater, if you use a large bulb or a thinner capillary, both of them will make the thermometer more sensitive. In question three, figure 5.1 shows some apparatus designed to compare the ability of the two surfaces to absorb infrared radiation. The containers which are identical are painted on the outside. One is dull black, another one is shiny. Both are filled with water. So both are filled with the water initially at same temperature, which uh, describe how would you use the apparatus to compare the ability of the two surfaces. So how we can use this apparatus, we will measure the temperature change for the both thermometer in the same time interval. So how we can use this apparatus, we'll measure the change in temperature. in same time interval or for the same time interval then state the result you expect so which what result we ex expect because the dull and dark surfaces are good absorbers so we'll say the water in a dull black container will show greater change in temperature. Then the thermometer use have high sensitivity and linear scale. What is meant by high sensitivity? High sensitivity refers for a small larger expansion for a small change in temperature. We call that as high sensitivity. So for a small change in temperature is a larger expansion we call high sensitivity and why high sensitivity is important because when temperature change is small whenever the temperature change is small we prefer to use a high sensitivity thermometer then the last part less than a minute left so last part what is meant by a linear scale Linear scale means equal distance between the marking on the thermometer so when we have equal distance between the marking on the thermometer we call that as a linear scale. <coughs> 